So, as we all know, Miles Davis's observation from Traprain Law has caused, you know, a bit of an upset with Flat Earthers, and in particular, it's obviously troubled Dell because ever since it happened, he's been running a bit like a headless chicken. He's done everything from sit shouting and screaming in his videos. Know that that's unusual. Um, you know, doing everything he can to attack Miles's character rather than dealing with the actual facts. Um, making observations and, you know, bad observations, but going outside and doing various observations and or tests and making various claims and assertions, which, when it boils right down to it, have nothing to do with the direct claim being made by Miles from the place of his observation. So he's doing everything he can to complain about this observation and try and tell all his followers that it's false and that Miles is lying. But the one thing he won't do is go to Traprain Law and actually repeat the observation to prove that Miles is lying. So he has to invoke, ironically, sophistry. He has to create a false argument by going out and playing with toys and using cameras and making false equivalencies by having very close objects to the camera and showing how they can block objects in the distance and he cheated and put his camera under the table in his first demonstration and so on and it's gotten to the point where he even disabled the comments on his videos and he's still still going on about it so this is the current topic again we've got Dell going off his nut about Miles' observation Gav the little parrot on his shoulder chiming in as well. So Dell's done a couple of things in the last few days. Again, trying to debunk Miles without actually going to the place to debunk Miles. And you know that something bugs him when he has to leave his house. So, here's the first thing that Dell did. All I want to do is look at a couple of these things without going into any great detail and show some obvious things that stand out as flaws. And there'll be more things you could look at, but just a couple of things I want to point out to people and then leave it at that. And you can see this rig that he's built, an L-shaped piece of wood with a pipe and a level strapped to it. And it appears to be just wedged into the sand, not exactly the most scientific way of getting a level line, but... Hey ho, if that's what he wants to work with. Obviously we could be, you know, really pedantic and say, well, we don't really know the wood straight, we don't really know the pipe straight or something ridiculous like that, but to keep it simple, we'll just work with the idea that the rig itself is going to work if it's used properly. So the purpose of this particular video that Dell has made is, is going to try and make the claim that the horizon always rises to eye level and that if your camera is leveled so that you're looking at centre of frame which was his argument against Miles and obviously he thinks this goes against the globe model because the horizon should drop but of course it would drop in either case but that's another story what we're going to demonstrate is that when we're looking through this is perfectly aligned with the tube here so the tube is intersected by the horizon halfway so one of the points I want to make here is, is what this would demonstrate the geometry of a sphere here at the top of the sphere, everywhere you stand here at the top of the sphere. So it's you can on a mirror of your dimension of your feet. So you notice there that Dell actually acknowledges that if you're at the top of a sphere, that each part would curve away from you equally, which is actually the root of the reason why his concept of being able to see left to right curvature wouldn't work which is a beautiful piece of irony. But anyway, it's always interesting to me that you've got people who can make these kind of statements, but it's clear that they don't understand the implications of them. Moving on. If we're looking at here and something like Gilles are off, you're looking at the horizon, you have a globe proponent who will tell you that, you know, things are obscured by the curvature of the Earth. If that was the case, this is what this week's memories about. What we're going to show is that this is a point up here. Look at this, the horizon intersects perfectly through the middle. 
Now we go to elevation. We're going to move up the elevation. What should happen is that the horizon should be below the line of sight because you're on a sphere. That's the geometry of a sphere. That's what it dictates. It should happen. So if we're lined up perfectly level and form here with this apparatus, and we get a perfect intersection of the horizon through the centre of the tube, when we go to elevation now, on a sphere, the horizon should not be at the eye level. It should not be. That's the problem. Right, so he's made his case. Look through the pipe, horizon will be across to the centre. Move to elevation, look through the pipe. The horizon, if you're on a globe, will not be across the centre, but if you're on a flat plane, it will be across the centre. It's obviously his position. <clears throat> so just remember that this all stems from the claims made about Miles not being exactly centred. OK, so now we're at the camera view. We're supposed to be looking dead centre through the pipe, and before we even start, we can see that the pipe is off to the right. Now we'll wait till he zooms in and see how it looks through the actual pipe. So this, this here is the footage from the sea level down at the beach. And you notice that the pipe is moving around all over the place. The image is constantly wobbling around. And you can actually see that the horizon is moving up and down inside the pipe there. Yeah. It's down here, it's up there, it's down here, it's up there. So, Dell has paused it here. And even where he's paused it, if you actually look at it, I've not got the, the means to measure it right here, but... It looks to me like this darker semicircle representing the water is smaller than the higher semicircle. So that is not running across the centre. So the camera's off to one side. The whole apparatus seems to be moving around, or the camera is, or both. So it can't be claimed to be perfectly level and perfectly centred. And when it's paused we can see that the horizon isn't at the centre and while he was filming it, that it was jumping around all over the place. So basically this demonstration fails completely and makes him guilty of the same problem that he's accusing Miles of. So now I'll skip it to the high elevation. Well, you know, we're looking at the very same area that we were at the beach. So when we're at the beach, you'll have a globe proponent who will tell you that, you know, the curvature's there and things are starting to go beyond the curvature which means when they pinpoint that, the, the horizon should remain in a fixed place, okay, because the geometry of a sphere dictates that. No, he's got that wrong. He might be meaning something else, but what he just says is that the horizon will stay in a fixed place, which is completely incorrect on a globe. The whole point with a globe is that the horizon is the tangent of your line of sight with the surface, and as you raise elevation, you increase the distance you can see beyond that initial point, your tangent extends out further and you can see further and further the higher you go. But what he might mean is the surface rather than the horizon itself. So we'll give him a 50-50 on that one. He might be saying one thing and meaning another. So when we go up to elevation, as we've set up, we'll have a perfectly horizontal apparatus with a camera aligned perfectly level with it. And you can see that the horizon intersects the centre of the pipe perfectly in alignment with the, the observer, which is the camera in this case. Now, what are the chances that that's the case when they couldn't even get it right down at the beach? Let's have a look. Again, before I let it get to the point where he's looking through the pipe, we can see that the camera is off centre and it looks like the pipe is sitting low in the frame, so it's off to one side, down towards the bottom, so clearly the camera can't be centred with the pipe. You can see again that the pipe is rocking around, so it's really a faulty test because that motion alone is going to change the location relative to the pipe 
of the the water that's being seen in the background. It's it's no different from putting a hand in front of your face and moving your hand around or something like that. It's just a ridiculous test. It would be okay if it was actually levelled, actually centred and solid, if the camera was actually properly levelled and aligned with the pipe, etc. But this is just a rotten test. It's badly performed. Yeah, it keeps moving around and he keeps zooming in and out, so if we pause it, right here it looks like there's a disproportionate amount. At the moment it looks like the water is slightly higher than the centre of the frame and the upper semicircle is a little bit smaller than the lower. Dell keeps skipping the video, so that doesn't help. Okay, so. Yeah, well, right, so he doesn't get as much to work with. The camera zooms in and out a couple of times. Um, it looks as though, again, because of the movement of the pipe, you can't actually see that the horizon is in the centre. And based on the fact that they've built a rig which is going to be prone to being top heavy, and also, we can see it's moving about in the wind, and they haven't aligned the camera perfectly to try and claim that this is a demonstration of getting something perfectly levelled and proving that the horizon is therefore in the centre of the frame is complete nonsense. It's a failed test. Surprise, surprise. So let's move on to his next test. Uh, this one, I don't want to talk about too much. I want to just move straight to pretty much to the point that the essential flaw in everything he's saying here. So he goes to the trouble of doing this water level supposedly to make sure that he, he sets up a row of pipes that are evenly spaced and all at the same height so he can look along the, the length of them. So the problem with this one, although the, the setup isn't he, you know, as, as accurate as he would like to try and claim, you know, the the pipes look a bit dodgily cut and when he shows the side view of them they all look a wee bit wonky from each other, they're not perfectly straight, all that kind of thing. There is there's issues with the setup on this one as well. But ultimately the issue with this one is placement of the camera and the claims that are being made with regard to how objects in the foreground will block objects in the, the background because obviously objects in the background reduce an angular size due to perspective. But it's actually perspective that makes his argument wrong. Because what he's doing is misrepresenting the observation that Miles has made. Because Miles has made an observation where the first object of concern is many, many miles away already. And then comparing that to another object which is many miles away. What Dell does here in several different ways, looking down the length of these poles, changing the height of his camera again and making these false accusations at miles, and comparing, like, a, say, a goalpost to the bridge in the background and things like this, every single thing's got the same flaw. And that flaw is that he's using an object that's right up near to the camera to compare to an object at distance. So obviously, because perspective does matter, what he's doing is placing an object with huge angular size right up near, close to the camera. This is just the same as being able to cover the moon with your thumb. However, a more realistic comparison would involve him looking at something far away and seeing how that looks compared to something else which is further away but twice the height. So that they're both reduced such an angular size that they don't block the view of the camera, which is what he relies on. So. So, you know, that's the gist of this one. I just want to kind of explain it rather than skip through the whole video. So he does this setup. I'll see if I can get the side view. Well, there's just one example we can pause it because Dell, you know, he, he moves the camera around a lot in the original video and then he skips through the video and talks through the top of it when he's presenting it on the Hangout. So it makes it more awkward to see these things, but you can see that these poles on the you know, well aligned vertically. But anyway. In the background. 
So here's one of the first points where he actually kills his own argument. He's made the point that he's got this row of poles which are the same height and then a pole at the back which is double the height of these and then shifted the camera down low so that you get this effect that the lower poles are as high or higher than the double height pole which is how he's tricking his audience because the, these poles are so close to the viewer, to the observer, that they're taking up so much of the angular size, the, the field of view, in the, in the entire scene. But then he goes on to point out how small this goalpost looks in the background, which he thinks goes for his argument because he's pointing out that the poles he's got in the foreground are taller than the goalpost, which in reality they're not. But the point is, is that the goalpost, which is taller than all these because it's at a distance is already reduced in size and if you look at anything behind it which is also reduced in size due to distance the size relationships look correct something taller is taller than the goalpost so this is the a closer match to what's happening with miles the first object in miles's observation is a far away object the bridge and the taller object the next thing is behind it again now, obviously the thing we can see at the moment behind the goalpost is quite close to it, so there's not going to be a big difference there. But if we skip into a further part of the video, you'll see that he does it again. Now look at this, you want to see somebody absolutely, completely missing the point and completely misrepresenting what's being done. This is it. He puts something right up in front of the lens of the camera, blocking half the view so that you can then say, oh, look at these hills in the background. Which, of course, is a completely ridiculous comparison. It doesn't, again, due to the actual laws of perspective, which he's trying to say mean that Miles is wrong, he's actually used them against himself because he's pushed something right up into the field of view and made its angular size absolutely massive. So, of course, that is going to block, up, block everything in the distance. Again, doing the same thing right up to the thing, covering the camera. So you're covering the entire bottom half of your field of view with a, an object, which can be done with an object of any size. This doesn't represent what it's like to look at something in the distance. So actually a, fair, a fairer comparison would be not to look at this close up, but to look at it when it's away down the other end of the field. And then you would see that although that bridge looks very small, this would sit far below it. The pole with the little bit of pink card or whatever on it would look proportionately small in comparison to the bridge. And that's what's happening in Miles's photograph because everything is at distance. And the distances matter. The distances between the two objects that are the focus, the hills in the background and the bridge in the foreground for Miles's observation the distances are almost exactly the same and the distances are large so what that means is that the relative parallax that you experience for fairly large movements of the camera work out to quite small angles over that large distance so the overall effect is minimal whereas when you do something like this and push something right up into the camera very very small movements make for massive amounts of parallax so Dell is just completely um, misrepresenting what Miles has done and then you just need to ask yourself well is that because he himself doesn't understand what he's talking about or is it because he does understand what he's talking about but he's just a lying bastard or maybe it's a kind of a combination of both because let's face it why does he have to go and piss about down at the beach with some you know fact why does he have to make up a rig in the first place, then go and piss about at the beach. Why does he then have to go again with some stupid lengths of tube and cut them and all this kind of stuff? All this ridiculous pissing around, doing these homebrew tests, when all he needs to do is get his fat arse in his car, drive for about an hour and a half or so over to Traprain Law, get his fat arse up the top of the Traprain Law and take a photograph. This is sophistry. This is a guy who's going out his way to create fake arguments to convince an audience about the situation rather than actually doing the thing that he preaches, which is 
to repeat an observation. If somebody says they've done something, remember this is Dell's thing. If somebody makes a claim, then somebody else should be able to repeat it. Well, Miles has went and done something in the real world and he's put a claim next to it. Anybody else is free to go and repeat that to see if the claim stands. That's what Dell needs to do. But that's the one thing he won't do. But he'll spend time doing this. That tells you what's really going on with this guy. People try to make out that Dell is honest and that he really believes these things. If this was true, he wouldn't have to cheat and falsify his results. He wouldn't have to block his uh, he wouldn't have to block people from his chat. He wouldn't have to prevent commentary. He wouldn't go out doing all these ridiculous tests, trying to convince people of the things they already believe in, when all he needs to do is go and repeat what somebody did and disprove it in real life. That is an agenda at play. 